Over the last 35 years, the Chinese economy has expanded dramatically, increasing more than 45-fold. Today, it is the second largest economy in the world, surpassed only by the United States. Despite these economic gains, however, China remains one of the worst countries in the developed world in terms of basic human rights. For all of its financial reforms, China is still a strict authoritarian state with severe limits on freedom of expression, religion, and assembly. The government is currently holding an estimated 500,000 people in detention without any charge or trial. At the same time, government officials routinely harass and abuse ethnic and religious minorities, including Tibetans, Mongolians, and Falun Gong practitioners. In addition, millions of people with legitimate grievances are blocked from seeking justice through the legal system. While the Chinese constitution technically provides human rights for all of its citizens, the state does not abide by its own laws. And yet there is a growing movement of human rights activists stepping forward in China to fight for greater justice, despite the risks involved. They are initiating lawsuits, filing petitions, and organizing protests to bring about change. According to the advocacy group Human Rights Watch, these activists endure police monitoring, detention, arrest, forced disappearance, and torture. Some are even put to death. Nevertheless, thousands of reformers continue to boldly push forward. One woman who has bravely challenged the system is Wen Zhuo Hu, a human rights activist who fights to protect the rights of China's rural poor. Ms. Hu focuses primarily on helping people whose land has been taken unlawfully by corrupt government officials. She provides legal aid to poor farmers and informs them of their constitutional rights. As a result, she has been targeted by the government and was eventually forced to leave the country. But even in exile, Hu continues to fight for human rights in China. This is her story. Wen Zhuo Hu was born in 1970 in a large manufacturing city known as Tianjin. After graduating high school, she attended Sichuan University, where she became involved in the student-led uprisings that culminated in the Tiananmen Square Massacre. Although she was just 19, who was a student leader in the movement, organizing marches, giving speeches, and demanding political reform. As a result, who was arrested when the movement was crushed and detained for two full months. Due to her young age, however, she was treated relatively lightly and released with a warning. This marked the beginning of Hu's involvement in political activism. From 1995 to 2003, Hu pursued additional college degrees, this time at universities overseas. When Hu returned to China, she was determined to improve her country's human rights protections. In late 2003, Hu founded the Renji Kwan Studio in Beijing, known in the West as the Empowerment and Rights Institute, an organization dedicated to promoting human rights. Through the institute, who was able to offer legal advice to a range of disadvantaged citizens. One of the most common cases handled by Hu at the institute involved land seizures. Local officials began taking land from peasant farmers to clear the way for industrial development. While the farmers were sometimes compensated for their land, they were often given no money at all and generally offered no choice in the matter. Farmers who resisted were violently attacked and forced off their property. Who offered legal aid to these farmers and informed them of their rights. She helped them file petitions and take legal action. Although her efforts were not always successful, Who gave local farmers a clear means of fighting back. More importantly, she gave them hope. We want to protect the rights of citizens and demand that the government fulfill its promises, Who said in a 2007 interview. The Chinese government should protect the rights of the peasants. If it says that it represents the people, then it should represent the people. We want the government's actions to be consistent with its words. Hu's activism, visibility, and public statements eventually made her a target. In 2005, Hu was arrested while advising a small group of farmers. She was detained, interrogated, and threatened by local authorities. After several more incidents, Hu feared for her safety and fled to the United States, where she waited for the situation to calm down. As someone who witnessed the Tiananmen Square massacre, Hu was well aware of the potential danger she faced. She was also keenly aware of the story of Ni Yu Lan, a housing activist who was arrested, tortured, and beaten so badly that she is now permanently confined to a wheelchair. Other activists have been executed outright or have died under suspicious circumstances while in custody. It is estimated that the Chinese government executes thousands of people each year, although exact numbers are not known. It is clear, however, that China executes more of its citizens than any other country in the world. After a few months in hiding, Hu returned to China. Despite her efforts to keep a low profile, however, she was immediately placed under surveillance. Then, in May 2008, 
who was arrested without charges and taken to Kincheng Prison, considered to be one of the most dangerous prisons in the world. After a few weeks, she was released without explanation, but police then evicted Hu from her apartment and confiscated all of her possessions, leaving her homeless. As a result, Hu was forced to stay with friends and relatives, moving from place to place. The entire time, she remained under constant surveillance by the state. In late 2008, Hu found out that she was pregnant. The prospect of raising a family in China while being constantly harassed by the government gave her a new sense of vulnerability. In July 2009, Hu reluctantly decided to leave her country of origin and seek refuge in the West. Hu was able to settle in eastern Canada and make a home for herself. Although she no longer lives in China, Hu continues to fight for human rights there. Hu now works with the China Democracy Party, a group of Chinese activists living in exile in the West. Hu heads up the group's Human Rights Committee, monitoring developments in China and pressuring Western diplomats to take action. Hu remains committed. Determined to protect the rights of Chinese citizens, and hoping that one day China will have a political revolution that will be as transformative and revitalizing as the economic revolution has been. Of course, Hu is not alone in her work. Other activists working to promote human rights in China include Gao Shizhang, a prominent lawyer defending political reformers and religious minorities. Gao has helped dozens of people and worked to highlight their causes. But as a result of his efforts, he has been disbarred, arrested, imprisoned, and tortured. Although he has been in prison for five years now, he remains committed to his cause. Another champion of the people is Wu Qing, a member of the government who is working to reform the state from the inside. As a deputy of the People's Congress, Ms. Wu has fought to make government more transparent, responsive, and democratic. She meets weekly with her constituents, challenges official policies, and pushes the government to follow the Constitution. Despite her outspokenness, she has yet to be disciplined or harassed. And then there is Zhu Ziyang, a lawyer, teacher, politician, and human rights activist. Ziyang is one of the founding members of the New Citizens Movement, a group of reformers working within the system to fight corruption, promote human rights, and encourage the government to uphold its own constitutional laws. Ziyang was arrested in early 2014 and sentenced to four years in prison, but like the others, he refuses to back down and walk away from his ideals. These four examples demonstrate the power of the common person to fight against injustice, even in the face of a powerful and repressive government. While some of them have been imprisoned or driven into exile, their commitment to the cause remains strong, and the number of people pushing for reform in China continues to grow.